Welcome again to another season of uh, Beyond the Title, where we speak with exceptional professionals with exceptional and extraordinary experiences. Joining us today is Emmy from Digital Transformation for Humans. Hi, welcome, Emmy. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's great to see you. You too, you too. How have you been? How's, how's the season uh, turning up for you? This season is quite different from all the other seasons. You know, because this year is quite challenging and in a way it's quite amazing because there are challenges, but there are also opportunities. And I'm trying to be on the positive side of things, but it has been a tough year. So now we're looking forward to wrap up all the projects, all the tasks and look forward into the festive season, right? And then plan yes. for the 2021. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Uh, and I love the, the, the picture you've given us. It's, it's with you next to a Christmas tree. Uh, where is that, by the way? Uh, it's in, I'm in Stockholm in Sweden. So, and yes, Christmas tree is a beautiful thing. And we have already one. Do you have one? Oh, I do actually. Uh, well, <laughs> I would have turned towards my house, but it is in slight of a disarray. Uh, but yes, I do, I do. The, the boys actually uh, helped me put it up together uh, early this week. Amazing. Yes, yes, it is. Hey, so Emmy, uh, you know you've been you've been a digital transformation lead for a very long time, uh, but but I'm also very curious. You know, what is that philosophy of life that drives you to do what you do? What's the reason you jump out of bed every morning? Yes, uh, that's a great question. You know, not so easy to sum it up into a short answer, but I love what I'm doing professionally. I'm really passionate about it. But I have also my life besides my family, which is super important for me. I care about my family most of all. And people I love around me and my vision, my projects, all that, you know, it makes me move forward, look around, and I see life as a game. So, yeah. you know, it's just one step at a time, and let's see what's next. Surprise me with something nice. <laughs> Speaking of games, uh, you know, I, I often allude to the fact that life is like a movie, and I'm, I'm one of the characters that, that is playing this, this movie. Uh, but if life were a movie, what character, which character would you like to play? Oh, who am I? Master Yoda, probably. Nice, nice. The amazing and uh, philosophical creature, helping others and uh, looking into the depth. Awesome. Uh, by the way, if you're from the Star Wars, Star Wars universe, are, are you following The Mandalorian? There's a second season come out recently. That's my plan, actually. Once I'm done with all my business <laughs> projects, I'm looking so much forward to deep dive into that. Yeah. Oh, a bit of holiday watching. I, I like that. I like that. Um, because you mentioned that, you know, th there's a lot of work to be done, right? There's so much as you're getting towards the end of the year, as you're getting to, you know, finishing that and taking some time off. Uh, what is it that keeps you sane and structured? What's that one app that you can't live without? My favorite app is uh, Gaia. It I do not know that one. It's an amazing one. And, you know, it collects not only the mindfulness parts, but also some knowledge, some latest um, discoveries and there is a wow. lot of interesting really interesting people in there well you know as in any projects there is sometimes they go probably a little bit far too far uh, but uh, overall I can find something what can ground me help me looking into the thing from another perspective and it helps me and I think meditation, it is something important and it yes. gets just more important. I saw an article in uh, Forbes recently, just a few days ago, about their conclusion that if it was 
some kind of nice addition before for any leader now it becomes mandatory oh wow wow uh, and you could you repeat the name of the app again uh the app is called gaia gaia okay i'm gonna actually try it out you know what better time to try it out than now yeah but it's a paid one why not? Why not? You, you, you'd rather pay for yourself than, you know, uh, spend on frivolous other things. God bless. So um, what was your first job? What was your first job and what was it like? My first job was in a big IT corporation as I finished university as IT engineer. Uh, so, you know, I started in the Cisco department. And I was working with the hardware and, uh, well, it was a really nice group of people, but my heart was pulling me toward marketing. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I was doing my best to be somewhere in between and try to connect. And that's probably where it started. I, I was passionate about marketing and the uh, behavioral things and human factors from the childhood you know so i was really interested in all that um so you know in the end of the day i realized that you can't become a leader and good enough if you don't burn for what you are doing you yeah. have to be 100 percent into it you you have to love it and go for it even when you are not at work even when you are not required to do it you still have to feel like doing it and developing to become really good. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. That is a brilliant teaching to take forward as well. And I'm guessing a lot of marketing uh, right now has become so measurable, uh, you know, oh, because yeah. of, of smart professionals like yourselves coming from a technical background, from an engineering background, even to develop that MarTech space that we are all vying to have in the future in all of our companies. And that's amazing. Actually, it's amazing that more and more data comes to the purpose of creating a better user experience and experience, customer experience overall. Uh, but at the same time, I pay a lot of attention and talk a lot about the corporate culture, about the culture which yes. creates a strong and sustainable basis for any technology, for any approach you know because without sure. on ground it's not going to fly and that's why probably many of the digital transformation projects are sinking because you know so the true. organization yeah. is not ready the stakeholders are not ready and the leaders are not ready to embrace and adopt it in a good way no, I completely get you I completely get you uh, speaking of you know uh, challenges What's been one of your biggest leadership challenge that you faced this year or, or you're facing now? This year I have been through the challenge as a leader, leading the team. And, you know, in, in the springtime when the resources were in danger and we started cutting off hours uh, and everything became so disconnected and digital, it, it was a short time where it was really uh, required for me as a leader to switch into another style to understand yes. how am I going to fulfill all those business requirements and support them in a new way, in a valuable way so that we can uh, evaluate and uh, have enough data into actionable insights around what's going on now not before but we have to act now we have to survive we have to thrive and how are we going to approach this and how yeah. can i and my team help from that perspective as a data analytics and insights uh, leader you know it's important to understand of course what are the opportunities and what are the risks and then it was quite tricky to deliver all that on the hours when our hours were cut and to keep my team engaged still when it was quite stressful to go through that period of time. It was another challenge, but uh, I embraced it and I went all in and I think it was a really great experience and I'm, 
I'm really happy about how we went through that and we showed good results, really good results. And I was presenting them at different big events. So it was nice. Innovation was a part of what I was uh, supporting a lot because when something is changing like this, it's an opportunity. And then it's about innovation as well. Awesome. Awesome. It, speaking towards, you know, as we get into 2021, what is that hope for the future? For the future, I hope that things will change, however, to the better, because now it's still quite shaky. And I don't believe that it will come back to how it was before, really. Yeah. So what I see in front, it's a nicer, more balanced and more sustainable world. And from the digital transformation and leadership perspective, I see more soft skills, more of the human factor and more understanding of the reasons standing behind the conclusions and events, you know, because yes. oftentimes something really amazing might be taken in the wrong way because the reason, the real reason is laying somewhere else, but it's sure. like an iceberg, you know, it's not visible. So everybody's pointing to where it's just a part see. of the result already, you know, yeah. well, it's important to dig deeper and to understand the roots. Uh, the cause of the problem and uh, take action on that instead of just trying to and another thing very important I think there is always and I see leaders they are so overwhelmed they are so stressed about yes. the future and the actions and I think it's really important to start doing what is important before doing what is urgent because the urgent tends to take over the important from time to time and then you lose your straight path and take a step aside so it takes time to readjust your strategy after. Very nice. Very nicely said. And yes, uh, I think uh, 2021 for me is definitely going to be the year where companies are going to take stock again, look at where the challenges lie and try to address those root problems. Um, I, I'm looking forward to a very strong year ahead with that. Uh, Question uh, for you also is, you know, what's what's the proudest moment? Because we heard about your your initial life, uh, initial uh, work life. Of course, you've become this amazing digital transformation leader in your space. Uh, I'm also wondering what is, you know, one of your proudest moments in life, in your work life? Well, in my work life, there are moments there are different moments, you know, and uh, it's about embracing them all. Sometimes you enjoy them. Sometimes you just have to do the best out of them and yeah. see it like your lessons to get actionable insights and yes. avoid what you didn't enjoy. And at the same time, you know, uh, besides going through my work life as, as an individual, as a person, I'm seeing it broader and I see it as a part of my life. I don't see that work-life balance in the same way as many others are talking about it because it's still same me, it's still same values and it's still same dreams and uh, way of communication etc because you know you can't pretend to be something what you are yes. not and have it in a sustainable way. So for me it's important to enjoy as much as possible and create results. I'm a very result driven person and it's really nice to see results, to see people getting their results in a smoother, easier way when you are helping out. And you know, me, when I'm standing for data and insights and uh, analytics and uh, I have to understand the business objectives. So when you, come forward with with recommendations with insights about why this is like this where we have a problem and how to solve it and it works out then it's really amazing to see everybody being on board and acting as a big team wow in the, the day, you know it's like no matter what you're doing in the company it's same goals for everybody about the organizational business objectives yeah 
Kudos, kudos there. Uh, and what is the one fact that we don't know about Emmy today? Huh. What is that fact? Did you know that I'm a professional florist? It did not, though no, I do see a you... nice uh, arrangement behind you, a floral arrangement yeah. behind you. Is, is that something you've done? Uh, it's an orchid, but I love orchids because they are harmonizing the space. Nice. And overall, I see floristics and design as a very natural, very easy way of harmonizing your life and learn about the balance and harmony and get grounded and spread joy and happiness around <laughs> you. Because imagine just a simple bouquet of flowers can create such a difference and introduce such a different energy into so the true. communication. So, you know, it's a lot about looking at the nature and uh, enjoying its beauty, its uniqueness and spreading <laughs> that positive energy from there. Wow. I, I'm surprised you didn't send us a picture, not just next to a Christmas tree, but next to a lovely flower arrangement next to you, because that would have been such a beautiful view as well. And thank you so much, Emmy, for joining us today. Hope you have a great end of the year. Uh, as we get into 2021, I'm hoping that you're going to have an amazing amount of success. And we'll, of course, be in touch with you for many other projects to come. Thank you so much, Steve. It was such a pleasure to be here today and I'm wishing you all the best for the Christmas period and for the new year and uh, for the 2021. I'm looking forward to meet you again in 2021 and run new projects together. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Emmy. For those who are watching us, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, we are going to take a break for the next couple of weeks uh, till we get into the new year. But for those of you who are you know, uh, interested in watching us or joining us, do drop us a line. Do come back to us on Thursday, 7th of January at 10 a.m. Singapore. Sorry, 10 a.m. CET or 5 p.m. Singapore time. See you then and stay safe. Stay healthy. Ciao.